Welcome, and thank you for joining us this morning. We're going to start talking a little bit about the actors that you work with. So when you cast an actor, how much does the look, the behavior of your character change at that point? For us, we're definitely influenced by the actors. The, the character designs have usually been established, but certainly the personality and the way they emote and, and speak evolves definitely as we work with the actor. Same here. Uh, we, like Christine said, generally the character design is e at least in progress. Um, and, but we're looking for a personality and a distinctive voice. And personality in, in my most recent movie, Smallfoot, we really wanted someone that is extremely charming and exuberant. And so we think we found the perfect person in Channing Tatum. He just brings it to whatever role that he plays. And how, how did you find him? Did you look at He's, a lot of actors or? We didn't look at a lot of actors. We had a very short list. And, you know, then we tested them obviously against character design and put them into nonsense scenes and felt how they sounded. And he just was consistently cheerful, gregarious, outgoing, fun, and uh, just charming. And that was what we were looking for in the character. Everyone knows that the small foot isn't real. <laughs> or is it? Oh, that's nice, real nice. Way to scar him for life. <laughs> and uh, another member of your cast, Common. How did you find Common for that role? You know, he was not at the top of the list, but he was a kind of a late-breaking idea. And because he was actually spreading his wings in a lot of the entertainment areas that he's now, I think you can see him almost everywhere doing a lot of different things. Um, but at that time, he was just venturing out and having all these discussions. And I had the luxury of being in a pitch with him. It was just the casting director, me, and the director, Carrie Kirkpatrick. And he's just so soulful. And Carrie and he connected on music level because Carrie is a songwriter, as is Common. So they were having a very in-depth conversation, and we were just gaga over him. But he is just beautiful, beautiful voice. Um, loved the project, and that meant it was a perfect connection. Was it always conceived as a musical? It was not always conceived as a musical. Oh, it, how it, did that change? Uh, uh, it changed very late in the game. There were actually two full iterations, and one with a complete a different set of creative, a different creative team on the pro on the project. Um, we got about six months into a second rebo uh, a reboot of it. Um, and Kerry came aboard to write, ostensibly to direct, although he wasn't given that job formally for a few more months. There was also a regime change at the studio, uh, which is oftentimes extremely valuable because you get a new, fresh set of eyes, and we've been in it and in the thick of it for a while. Um, and the new head of the studio, Toby Emmerich, came from music. And he said, what if we make this a musical? But we were well into it, so it was way late. Um, so we had to jump on that bandwagon very quickly. Carrie and his brother, Wayne Kirkpatrick, um, had written a Broadway musical, so they had history in songwriting and musical theater. And he was already on the project, so we said, would you consider? And actually, it was so attractive to him, because that's his first love, that he agreed. It's a lot to take on, to take on the writing, the directing, and the songwriting. So he had a lot to do in a very short amount of time. Was the cast already selected at the point? Because you had a cast that obviously can sing. <laughs> they were selected and cast before it was a musical. So we had to go to each of them and ask them if they would be willing to sing. And it was a little touchy in some regards. Some were like, okay, sure, I'll try it. Uh, we did listen to, obviously, Zendaya could sing. She had a musical career, but she wasn't pursuing that path. So it was, she had to really consider it. Um, they all wanted to hear their songs. Uh, Channing was, we had listened to him because he was in Hail Caesar. He paid attention to the dancing. And we said, but you can sing. And he goes, well, so we kind of approached it with, okay, we'll get a sound alike and you can do as much as you want on it. And it ended up being 98% Channing. He was that good. Uh, he had a music coach and he just stepped up and he's really pleased with the results. And Dea obviously does a beautiful job. Common's role was not a singing part, but we had this big exposition scene with his character and we said, hey, you know, he raps. This would be this a great, would be better. <laughs> this would be better. <laughs> So, it's a great number. Yeah, so uh, Carrie and Wayne wrote the song, and to his credit, he said, I have to be this character in order to do this song. I don't need to bring me to it, so I will do the song that you wrote as your character, and he had a great time doing it. So 
um, All's Well That Ends Well. And then James Corden really wanted to sing because he's, his song got cut from Trolls. <laughs> so, so we said, you're going to sing? And he went, yes! So that worked out really well. Now, Brad, for you, what was it like to bring back your Incredibles? The most fun I've ever had making a movie was The Incredibles. So it's the only project that I've done that, that completely started with me. All of the others have been somehow started uh, in some way before me. And, you know, Iron Giant was a book, and, and then it was a theatrical musical that was played in England, and Pete Townsend did the music for it. So that was, uh, you know, I, I changed the story a lot, but that was a pre-existing thing. Um, Ratatouille was Jan Pinkova's idea, and I, I was kind of brought in to uh, realize it. And uh, Incredibles is really the, the only one that I've done that is completely where I remember having the very first kernel of the idea and then taking it all the way through to completion. So it was kind of like uh, returning to your family. So when you, when you had the idea, um, tell us a little bit about when you, know, when you reached out again to you know, Holly Hunter and the rest of your... Oh, I mean, that was fun because... Uh, uh, when you're writing, sometimes you have a wish list or you don't know who and you're searching a little bit. But when you do, uh, when you're following something up, when you write, you're imagining these voices because now they're established and you know what they're going to do. And I know how Holly sounds as this character. And I imagine Sam when I'm writing Frozone. So it's kind of a joy. They were excited when... Oh, yeah. And, well, Sam would, had been talking it up for years and, like, saying, oh, yeah, sure, we're going to do the sequel. And I'm like, Sam, uh, are you going to do it without me, you know? And he's like, he knew what he was doing, though, because he just kind of... Uh, he's always in motion and he kind of prompted it to happen. You know, he just kept talking about it as if it was happening and pretty soon it was, you know. Now you have, you have a new villain, you have, um, you also have some new superheroes in it. Yeah. Um, tell us a little about Captain well, they're, some of the new... Well, they're kind of the wannabe superheroes. They're kind of, um, most of this, the people don't really remember this, but a lot of the heroes in that world died in the first film. They were killed by, uh, uh, the villain in that film. And uh, they're superheroes that you never really saw. They're just referred to. There aren't a lot of top tier superheroes left in, in our particular universe. And so this is kind of a group of second tier superheroes who uh, are hoping maybe they'll, you know, superheroes will become legal again and they'll get to do their thing. But they're not, they're kind of your your B superheroes, or maybe they'll become A superheroes, you don't know. But that was kind of the idea of them. And um, we brought in, um, uh, we have new characters um, with uh, Bob Odenkirk and Katherine Keener. And they're two of my favorite actors, and so to get a chance to work with them was great. Could you tell us a story, or what was it like to work with them? Um, well, I mean, you know, again, as you were alluding to, you, you cast somebody who can slip into a role, and, and I imagined uh, Evelyn Dever as kind of a bohemian, the kind of uh, woman who comes into a room and just sits on the floor or on a table with uh, legs akimbo, you know, just kind of bohemian. And um, I thought, oh, Catherine Keener would be perfect, you know. But I didn't realize that that's what she did. I mean... I had already described the character as that, and we had done drawings of the character doing that before I cast Catherine. But in the first recording session, she came in to a chair like this and sat with her legs folded, or then sat on a table, flopped on the floor, just kind of made herself comfortable like a, a cat or something, anywhere, like a bookstore cat, you know, just kind of plump. And I was like, that's the character. That's the character. I don't need to do any work. All I need to do is turn on the microphone, you know? And she was a blast. And Bob Odenkirk is, I'm also uh, a huge fan of. He's a, um, a, a great comedy writer. He wrote, uh, he created the character that Chris Farley played of the guy who was the counselor, you know, down in a van down by the river, you know? That's Bob Odenkirk's character, you know? So these are just hyper-talented people and they're a joy to work with. Following the huge success of the first film, I know that there was a lot of uh, hope, certainly, from audiences that there would be more Incredibles. But at what point did you 
have a story where you felt like, okay, it's time to do a sequel? Well, I had the, the core ideas when we were publicizing the first film, which is the role switch between Bob and Helen, where Helen gets offered the assignment instead of Bob, which just uh, completely Bob's never dealt with that before in his life, and to have, um, he's hyper-competitive, and to have the job go to the woman he's married to is just something he is kind of, when the film starts, he's not really able to cope with that too much. He wants to support her, but he also is, competitive and and he kind of doesn't know what to do with that and that idea I thought would would allow both characters uh, you know to to bloom in a way um, but it would force Bob to change and it would um, reignite the um, Elastigirl that you see at the beginning of the first film when she says settle down why would I settle down I'm here with the big dogs I'm never gonna settle down and then of course she settles down quite well and Bob in the middle in the beginning of the first film is saying I really want to have a family and yet he kinda is not engaged in that when you know in the film that's part of what the film's about so everybody's a little bit wrong about themselves and uh, I thought it would be fun to see her reawaken the professional side of herself and kind of love it. And the other thing I had uh, was the unexploded bomb of Jack-Jack because the audience knew that he had multiple powers, but the Incredibles did not. And I knew I just had that. So those two things I had r right away while I was talking, uh, you know, doing press for the first film. But the um, plot thing, the, the villain thing, I didn't have that, and that's what took me forever to figure out. And uh, uh, I had done um, with the story supervisor, Ted Mathot, we had worked on the opening sequence when I was doing Mission. Um, so I had been tinkering with it for a while, and pretty soon I thought, if I don't do it pretty soon, it's going to be too long. I mean, it was, you know, I mean, I had to go through this press thing promoting it just now where the first question out of uh, 400,000 journalists mouth over and over was why 14 years you know and it's like I didn't plan it this way obviously it's not a good plan you know but uh, you know uh, I did get around to it so and and I thought it would be bold after that much time to start the second that the film the previous film ended I thought that would be really cool and unusual. He also brought back fan favorite, Edna. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Skeleton in my closet, yeah. Done properly, parenting is a heroic act. Done properly. What would Edna say if she were here? <laughs> oh, uh, she would say, why is this guy speaking for me? <laughs> would, would she like to speak herself? <laughs> no, I don't. I like people imagining that coming from the tiny German Asian woman. Christine, you had more than one uh, film out this year. Um, tell us a little bit about your casting process. Yeah, our casting process, well, on Hotel Transylvania 3, which we're so excited how well it did this summer. It was always a fall movie and we moved it to the summer, has largely the same cast because it's been Adam Sandler and Selena Gomez driving it for years. But we um, added Jim Gaffigan to the cast and Katherine Hahn, who plays a a villainess who is redeemed and she's awesome she's she a is. she's delicious she's also in a role that i think i'm not allowed to say the name of her character um in our animated take on spider-verse which is coming out at the end of the year that movie where we got to cast everybody anew was so much fun when you were talking about the the what the qualities inside common that were brought onto screen i was thinking about Shamik Moore, who is from Dope, and he's such an incredible actor who embodies Miles Morales, and he's just a joy to be around, and he's, his voice work is delightful. He's amazing. The whole cast on that movie is great. Jake Johnson, who plays opposite him, Mahershala Ali, Brian Tyree Henry. We have really an amazing How cast. did, um, let's take one example, um, Mahershala Ali come onto the project? There's an incredible role of Uncle Aaron in the movie, and we sat around and talked about who's the finest actor of our time, and it was Mahershala. I mean, it was, I mean, honestly, Brian Tyree and he are, are, as far as I'm concerned, neck and neck for being some of the greatest actors working today. So we were lucky to be able to get both. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.